Now, moving on to the concept of China here. China was completely ruled by monarchs. Up to the year of 1911, China was ruled by the dynasty called Manchu dynasty. The Manchu dynasty kings are very much self-concentrated and like absolute monarchs. They never took the interest of the people. They used to increase the hikes of the prices and they used to give concessions for them. It is not that they are not interested here. They were forced to do this, such kind of situations because the situations are demanded by the colonial masters in such a way that. So, in order to have the modern shape or modern feel for China, the man who took the initiative was Mr. Sun Yat Sen. This man Sun Yat Sen removed the Manchu dynasty people from the rule and he has taken over the chair through a process of systematic fight. So, this man was considered as the founder of modern China. Earlier China was not a much developed nation but self-sufficient nation. As the time passed on because of the developments made by Sun Yat Sen and the other people who came after him made the things clear that China would appear to be an industrialized nation rather than only an agricultural nation. So the process of Sun Yat Sen forming into a modern China. Let us concentrate on two minutes about Sun Yat Sen. Who is this man of Sun Yat Sen? The Sun Yat Sen was a person who was born in a very poor family and though he is born in a poor family, he had a vision for his nation. He studied his medicine. He could do his fortune very well. He would get a better job than this. But he was very much upset with the fate or the conditions which are happening in China. So he was concentrating more on the fate of China rather than the fate of him. So he had some principles which would guide China to be a very well developed nation rather than the present existing situation. Now his principles are known as three R's. His principles are three in number. So the first one principle is nationalism. The second principle is democracy. The third principle is socialism. According to him, nationalism is must for any nation to attain development. What is the meaning of nationalism? The nationalism is nothing but the feeling of oneness between all the people that there is some binding force between all the citizens of the nation. That feeling of oneness is known as nationalism. Did you get the point here? For example, you take the Indians. The Indians are bound by the feeling that we all are together. We have unity in diversity. This is a bonding feature of Indians. In India, you find different language people, different cultural people, different religious people, different language spoken people, different dialectic people, different cultural people. All these together, we found together the Indian nation. In the same way, in China also, we have the multilingual nature, multi-religious attitude and they don't speak the same languages which are familiar with the other people. But to in order to build a strong nation, we need some strong binding connectivity. That strong binding connectivity, according to Sun Yat Sen, is nationalism. And moving on to democracy, till that time, we have experienced the absolute monarchy in China or by the control of the colonial masters, where the real people or the people does not have any influence or any power on the making of the government. In this process of making of the government, people should have their say must. So, this is the idea of our Sun Yat Sen. Basically, Sun Yat Sen is well educated, though he belongs to a poor family. He studied many of the books of medicine at the same time when he was in the free time in the library. He used to refer to the other developments which are happening in the world. So, he got an idea that democracy would be a better aspect rather than the monarchy. So, now nationalism and democracy are must for us. These two are commonly seen features anywhere in any corner of the world. Then he introduced the concept of socialism under the influence of Russia. Because in Russia, we can see people are fighting for bread. The condition is that the situations are worst. So in order to come out of the situation of the worst conditions, we have to plan properly and execute the system of colonialism. And to come out of colonialism and to have an equal development for all citizens, we need to have the socialism concept. What is this socialism? Socialism is nothing but the major lands, the major industries, the major profit shares are holded by the government. There will not be any individual share for anyone, provided everything will be taken care by the government. 
they will be paid fixed salaries which means that we don't have the division between the people of rich and the poor there will be all considered as equal members of the nation this is the process of socialism so his ideology was this so in 1911 when the revolution took place and china became a republican country under the influence of sun yat sen who took the initiative and formed the republican nation but it could not live longer very soon even sun yat sen who is having a great vision of the, towards the nation and who is very much committed towards it who left his personal life and moved on for the development of the country could not do much because he could not control the warlords who are the military people of china which resulted in the process that government have very limited control and the entire nation was controlled more by the warlords so initial state of democratic republic which was established by sun yat sen was a failure it has some more consequences to be added for this